quarantine Sherpa network, this show is for you. We shot an extra long review panel. And to tell you the truth, the first two segments, I think might be the funniest show we have ever made. And the last section actually brought tears to my eyes. Um, we really get into what's going on with Corona over in Europe, um, what Shane's doing as a small business owner, um, even a little bit of marriage advice during the quarantine. This is an excellent show. Keep your spirits up and uh, stay in touch. Hey, Sherpa Network. Uh, welcome to the Sherpa Review. Uh, I'm Tess Diaz, executive producer of DomainSherpa.com, and we are ready to rock and roll. Uh, this is the show where we get into the minds of successful domain name investors using real examples so we can learn strategies and tactics to become better investors ourselves. We will have three segments to the review, but a little bit different. First, we'll do the usual what's new Sherpas and discuss what they recently bought or sold. Next, we'll discuss some domains going to auction at namejet.com and whether the Sherpas think they're a good fit for you. And then we're going to talk about the coronavirus and how it is affecting each of these three Sherpas, the other businesses they run. Maybe um, you'll learn a little something uh, for yourselves along the way. So uh, welcome, welcome, uh, three past Sherpas and industry thought leaders. Uh, Shane Coltra, minus the beard, of DSAD.com. What's going on, Shane? Not too much. Just staying outside. I come inside for the first time in a month. Wow. Well. For this show. <laughs> I think Safer you in the garden. With the two you must be getting a lot of sunshine outside. in Illinois. Well, I, I did get in three vacations before it hit. So oh, I yeah, that's to, right. That's remember, right. I went to Hawaii. I yeah, kind of had a yeah. feeling that our travel would be limited. So I, I went all over the place before it Yeah, you came, got so. lucky with timing. I, I timed it out perfect. Yeah, yeah well yeah. played. Uh, Amanda Waltz of Saw.com. Hello, Amanda. How are you? Hi, doing well. Great to see you. You have new glasses. You have uh, a good setup. Uh, you're out on the East Coast. Yes, um, we are uh, under self-quarantine at this point in time. Um, our schools are all closed and we are finding really good ways to keep our time um, occupied. Lots of work, um, but also like Shane trying to get outside for um, a few hours out into the woods and do some hiking on a daily basis, um, keep our minds clear. That's wonderful. Good for you. Uh, and Drew Rosner of Media Options. Hello. Hello. So nice to see you and a button down shirt, no less. Yeah, you know, we're keeping it proper up in quarantine. <laughs> it's going to be a black tie dinner tonight. Maybe, you know, you got to you got to get creative. Uh, otherwise, you lose your mind. Sounds about right. All right, let's do this. Uh, what's new Sherpas? Um, so we're going to talk about one purchase or sale you've made in the past few weeks, what you paid or received for the domain, why you thought it was a good deal, how the, negoti how the negotiations progressed. Um, let's see, who is up first? Amanda, you are in the hot seat. Okay, so we are actually experiencing a experiencing a very good week um, this past week. We have two, um, two six-figure sales that are in escrow. One just closed. Um, one is still awaiting transfer. Um, one is a three-letter dot-com um, that sold, I would say, between two, 200 and 300 is what we're comfortable saying. Um, so happy about that. I have to give big props to um, our our broker who's on that one, Brooke Hernandez. So really psyched that she's killing it. Um, and she's also behind the other one that I can talk about, which I think everyone who knows me, I am all .com all the time. Um, but this is actually a .uk, which um, we, we personally don't see a lot of those. So it was exciting um, for her to be a part of that. Uh, good. Another good one that we can't talk about, it's a brand name um, UK, and also um, in the low six figures, and we're, we're psyched for her, psyched for the, the sellers as well. Um, two well-known sellers 
and um, we're happy for them. So I'm going out of the limb and saying that it was free.co.uk since that was a reported sale. And I, you don't see many six-figure CO.uk names. It's not. It's a dot .uk, dot not dot .co. Ah. So, um, and it's not related. I, I wish I could say that we were connecting wow. as we- Shocking to show. see in, in yeah. amidst Ooh. the chaos that two UK names would sell for six figures. Yep, where um, I was, believe me, I've been watching our um, escrow.com queue and um, there's some other one word, two word dot coms in there that are, are about to close or have closed in the past couple of weeks. Um, five figure deals. So I'm, I'm thrilled for our team. And, you know, our stance on all of this is really those of us that are keeping our wits about us and, and staying positive and forging forward as business um, as usual, um, understanding that the markets are not agreeing with as positively as we're thinking. I think those are the ones, those of us that are remaining in that way are going to wind up um, better off on the other side, whatever the other side might look like. That's a good way to put it, Amanda. Um, why do you think .UK did have, like, these seem like two pretty big deals? Um, um, well, the, I mean, the buyer came to us um, on the UK um, domain sale, and it was important and strategic to their business. I think it was defensive, um, and they just decided that they it, it were going to move forward with it. it. It wasn't easy. It was not an easy sale. And I think that that shows the, um, the depth of knowledge that our team has. Um, and Brooke really has a tremendous amount of persistence and stayed with it. Wow. So happy, for, happy for her, happy for buyer and seller. Congrats. Brooke was a good ad. Brooke does a great job. So. She does for sure. Pretty cool. Um, all right, who's up next? Uh, Shane. I don't really have anything too exciting to say. I mean, I, I bought a couple names on the aftermarket, but nothing more than a couple hundred dollars. So I, I, the only thing I'll add to the whole thing is the aftermarket is definitely not seeing a sign of uh, slowing down. If anything, people are stuck in their homes spending money. Um, you know, I talked about it the other day where uh, I, re I own Remote Coach, which we talked about on the show. I bought five years ago. We talked about it on the show for under $400. And Remote Coaching came up at auction on GoDaddy. And I'm thinking, this is a good add to what we already have. So I have both names. Thinking I'll just easily add it to the combination. And it went for $4,800, remotecoaching.com. Wow. Yeah. So I thought, well, I'm not going to add it to remote coach. Maybe I'm going to put remote coach back up on GoDaddy and auction that and see if I can't beat that by a little bit and be happy with my return. Certainly so, and good timing for. Yeah, no, I, that, that just happened a couple of days ago. So as soon as I settle down and not have to deal with the uh, other business items on the agenda right now, I'll, I'll certainly do that. Yeah, I mean, I'm still in, I still do domains every night. I still put in my two hours like I have for a decade, but there are some other hours added with the little COVID things going on uh, in the household. So I, I won't say that it's less domain. I'll just say it's more of everything else. So the days are a little longer. I actually didn't run for two days straight, which is the first time that has, that I have not done that post a marathon uh, probably in 10 years. So oh my gosh. I just wow. mentally tired. Like, you know, it was the first time I looked at the alarm clock and said, not today, not today. <laughs> um, we'll get back at it tomorrow. But so there hasn't been the what's new Sherpa domain numbers. I will say that uh, the other thing I'll add is some of the domains that I've had close to six figures that I wanted even more, uh, I did, if anything came within the last week or two, I dropped it a little bit saying that you know i'll take 90 instead of 110 um which is where they were at now things may have changed since the 10 days ago when they made the offer but looking at the market that that 90 minus commission could could do pretty well if i get in to you know certain stocks i feel like that i could get another 10 20 percent long run i'm not in a hurry for anything so uh, yeah which is important right now yeah i think i'm not trying to time anything i'm not a market timer but I'm, I'm smart enough to know that Amazon's adding 100,000 jobs and um, doing pretty well and the stock's at a discount of whatever it is. 
maybe long run they might be okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Probably not going under. No, I think Amazon's going to be okay. Uh, I've shopped yeah. at Amazon. They're doing fine. So what's yeah. new? Not domain sales, but still, still actively looking and working just like everybody else. All right. All right. Uh, Drew, how about you? Uh, okay. So um, <laughs> what y'all want to talk about? Let's see. I, I mean, I bought, I bought a bunch of names. Uh, I sold a bunch of names. Let's do two. Um, one buy, one sell. Yeah. All Fill right. my spot. All right. One buy, one sell. All right. So uh, we'll start with a sale. Um, sold. Sold variants.com. And is this a media options domain or for a client? Uh, this is a media options domain. Okay, variance.com, sold. What do you guys think, Shane, Amanda? I'll start. Um, it's a great one word, dot com. Um, I will say 125 grand, just because I think it's a great tech name. I mean, it, it can be used so much for so many things, just a good word. I'll say 125 grand. I think that... Uh, if it's a media options, maybe Drew's looking for some cash. It's certainly a, a perfect name. That's what I'll stick. That's what comes to mind first. Okay. I'm going to go a little higher. Um, 160. Thought process behind that? Um, yes. I think it's all of the things that Shane um, is commenting on. And I don't think that Drew's in a position where he needs to sell um, all that low, even if he wanted to get some cash in the door. Um, financially focused domains like that, um, he and I both know sell for uh, seven figures to the right buyer. So um, I'm a little higher because of those things. Okay. So uh, I agree widely with both of you, uh, but that being said, I'm looking for cash. <laughs> cash is king repeat after me cash is king so uh while you know we're fine we don't need cash uh i want as much cash as freaking humanly possible right now because uh you know like shane it's like well i whether it's going back into domains whether it's going back into the stock market whether it's going back into real estate i classic talk i don't care what it's going into uh, the whole world is on sale at about a 30 to 50% discount right now. And I think in a month, two, uh, maybe less, maybe less. We might find bottom faster than that. Um, I've, 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 I've got some illusions in my mind about things I'm looking for that if I can see this, I think that will be 30 to 45 days from turning the corner. I don't think we're there yet, but I think, um, I'm beginning to see some things where there's hope. So we'll see. Um, I think, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> you could buy, uh, and none of this is stock advice. None of this is advice in any way, financial advice in any way. It's just to make a point. But I'm looking at stocks this morning and I'm thinking to myself, like, I'm sticking with my, hypothesis that we're going to see a 70 to 80 percent drop because i think that we were due for a 30 to 40 percent drop and i think we're going to overshoot that by a 30 40 percent because um of the irrational exuberance and you'll have an equal irrational exuberance on the other side of selling for selling margin calls desperate people looking for cash etc so uh, but i'm looking at things like raytheon it's like one of the world's largest defense companies like, how is the coronavirus going to impact Raytheon's earnings? Like, I'm sure it will in some capacity because of, you know, human resources and, and you know, not being able to send people overseas for deals and trainings and things like that. But it's not going, you know, they're not a retailer. You know what I mean? Like, this isn't a restaurant chain. Uh, there doesn't require that much human interaction. And so I look at something like Raytheon, it's trading at like, nine times earnings with a 3% dividend at this price. And it's like, 
how much cheaper can that get? You know, like, and it probably will, it probably will get cheaper. Um, but so the point is simply this. Uh, so we sold variants for 75, uh, which is way below what I would normally sell that at. Uh, but this is a one buyer who's been negotiating with us for six months. Uh, I think their previous highest offer was 60 grand. And, um, uh, you know, there's, a, there's no other demand out there. So, you know, we're literally just circling back and saying to anybody that's made bona fide offers and saying, look, we're ready to make deals. And so if you want to make a deal, let me know and let's see how close we can get. And, uh, you know, in, in, in my opinion, this is the time to be saying, let's make a deal. Um, so I, I agree with you, Amanda. Uh, we had a really strong last week, a uh, really strong week last week, which I, you know, attribute to maybe trailing economics and uh, uh, Chris working his ass off. Uh, and, uh, and me working my ass off. Um, and we got some deals in escrow and I hope those are gonna close. Uh, we've had four deals in the last five days completely fall apart. Um, so anybody's guess what will close? Uh, but we've also had a couple of deals close. So, you know, big, big deals close. So, you know, it's anybody's guess. Clarify that, Drew. You've had four or five deals fall apart and you think it's directly, and first of all, I do want to say for our audience, we're filming on St. Patrick's Day, uh, March set. Oh, I'm not wearing green and no one else is either. Um, yeah, but once everybody sees it. I, yeah, but I'm, I was drinking green water. <laughs> <laughs> I did drink my green drink earlier too. I should have brought it up here with me. So there's like green in your teeth or something? Where are you going? <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> I bet if you check my blood is green. <laughs> Um, so we're filming on March 17th, and this airs uh, in six days. So yeah. for, for people to gauge. But what were you saying? So four deals fell through. At yeah, so for the record, Ra you know, Ra Ra Raytheon today is 125. It'll probably be 88 by, <laughs> by this drops. <laughs> on it. But so what happened? So these deals that fell through, how? What is that percentage compared to deals that normally fall through? Or Normally, we, I, I mean, I swear to God, I, I, you know, uh, no offense, Amanda, but if there is one single thing that I would say about our company, uh, it is we don't lose deals. Uh, if there's a single thing that I would tattoo on my fucking forehead, it's closer. I don't lose deals. I close at all costs. Under any circumstances, I don't give a shit. I get things over the finish line. That is my superpower. I will, uh, I will agree with you. Every deal that I have ever done with you, um, we close them. I, I, and yeah. I don't bring you offers that I know are not going to be worth the discussion yeah. because it's yeah. just how, how it is. So um, yeah. I feel you. I, you and Please. I talked last week yeah. about a deal that – um, wasn't an escrow, but um, has taken a very long time to get it to the point where it has, and it is very much on ice right now. I do yeah, think it will yeah. happen, but I don't think it's going to happen um, yeah. before the next six weeks. Yeah, we just had one. Of, we just had a client um, who their company was in the process of being acquired, and as a part of that, we were acquiring a new domain for them that was a six-figure transaction. Don't and touch your their face, whole, bro. huh? Your face. Don't touch it. <laughs> Back of the hand. <laughs> it doesn't even matter. I, my house is like uh, Fort Knox right now. I got there's nothing in, nothing out. Um, you know, packages get delivered. I push a button. Packages get delivered into my garage. Then we go in there with gloves and a mask on, unbox, take the shit out. You know, boxes go in the recycling, and that's it. Then you know, it's wash the hands. We've got a process. This whole this is like a you know, uh, a P4. Wow, you uh, did not marry a bio job. lab right now. She's got that's a concept. supply chain um, going. I wish. Hey, listen, was, two yeah. months of preparation. You know, if you start early, this is easy. So um, okay, back to these deals. The point is simply this: it, it, it's unequivocal. 
it's not even an up for ambiguity. It's 100% because of the virus. It's 100% because of the economy and the uncertainty. Uh, it, it, you know, Shane said it uh, uh, on Andrew Allen's podcast last week or this week, whenever that was. Uh, I said it on Domain Sherpa last week or a week before that, whenever that was. The worst thing in the world for any market is uncertainty. It's not about, you know, you could tell people, look, you know, if Trump went on his, you know, a very, you know, uh, presidential way and said, ladies and gentlemen, you know, I come to you tonight and uh, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but 70% of the world is going to die. Uh, we know this to be an absolute fact. 70% of everybody is dead. I believe that markets would react less to that than they would to there's something absolutely awful out there and we don't know if it's going to kill 1% or 70%. We don't know what this thing is. We don't know. The more we don't know, the more volatility. So it's uncertainty that drives people nuts. It's uncertainty that makes markets volatile. It's uncertainty that makes people stop spending. Uh, it, you know, it, it, it's in, and it's uncertainty often when you can make money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it well, all exactly. plays together. Volatility yeah, plays is together. the key to making it money. all compounds. It all compounds. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, uh, yeah, uncertainty okay, so. is going to just continue to disrupt markets. So whatever it doesn't, if you're in domain stocks, you know, it doesn't matter what you're doing. But the people that figure out the certainty will be the first ones that make all the money. Is one Absolutely. One that's Absolutely. The, it's the all about, that's what I was saying before. I've got a couple of things in my mind that these are the things that will determine the, 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 the trajectory and the timeline. And so I'm looking for those. And once I've identified those, you know, then I feel like I'll be uh, ahead of the curve. If, it doesn't mean I'm right. Uh, but this is a time for, you know, taking a fucking stance, not for being on the fence. So, um, yeah, it is what it is. But at the same time, at the same time that I'm telling you, I'm looking for cash. You know, it's variance.com is a name that I could usually buy for 20, 30, 40 grand. In fact, I think we bought it for 25. So, or 20 or something like that. So, um, you know. I'm, I, I think that's way under the value. I think that you guys are spot on. I think it's a 150 to 250 name. But right now, that 75, I can buy like three, four, five really good names over the next few months for that price. Or I can buy $75,000 uh, $75, worth of, you know, uh, VeriSign at a, 21 times earnings i can buy you know which i agree with uh uh you know what i've written it's like you know we're all in the demand business you know i you guys all want to complain about freaking price increases well why don't you just go buy some discounted verisign stock and call it a day and shut up like you know and don't get me wrong i'm an ica supporter a big ica supporter uh but you know hey I got a way better solution than spending millions <laughs> on lobbying to try and achieve something that's never going to happen, like stopping the increases in dot com prices. Uh, take that money, you know. Let's take the ICA's entire endowment, put it in Verisign stock at this point. Okay, um, I want to know what you bought. You sold variants. What'd you buy? All right. So what did I buy? I bought uh, bought a few things. Uh, What's right. your favorite? Point in case. My favorite is Enclave.com. Enclave.com. E-N-C-L-A-V-E.com. Correct. Okay. You bought it for yourself or for a client? Bought it for me options. Okay. Uh, Amanda, you get to guess first this time. 22. <laughs> that was quick. I didn't even get a chance to uh, do anything. Like I didn't even get a chance to secretly look it up. No, I'm not looking anything up. I, well, I, was, I was accusing Shane of that. No. 
<laughs> but he's not either. And I love yeah. for our, I wish I knew and Sherpa Network, feel free to let me know how, how to, when I film this, to show everyone's usernames because there's always a lot of shenanigans. But right now, Shane's is like all arrows pointing both ways and then six feet, please. <laughs> <laughs> And what did you say? I, yeah, I like just keep a six that. foot distance. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's great. I mean, got even my photo needs space. <laughs> okay, so I, I appreciate the social distancing thing. I was standing in line at the gas station the other day, and it was like, you know, I'm standing six feet behind somebody. The next guy standing six feet behind me, and I was like, that's right, man. I don't need you breathing down my neck. And in Europe. Let's keep, let's keep, Let's keep this. This should be a permanent thing. Yes. My wife is, has, my wife has jokingly said, this is the life I've been leading forever. It's really nice for all of you to join me. Exactly. Yeah, no, I, I love it. I love my That's how I feel. Gas pumps have kind of grossed me out. I've really thought, I think everybody thinks about their door handles and this and that, but gas pumps, everybody's touching. Uh, I got you. I come out, I got, I got a bottle of freaking bleach spray in my, in the door of my car. I get you out, I spray the shit gas, out of the whole like, handle. Bleach and, and gas I, together? Probably not. Probably. But <laughs> COVID-19. I, I with the hand sanitizer <laughs> and gloves and then I bring the gloves home and I wash them and so at the same time that my kids think I'm a hippie I'm also down with the chemicals in the car <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh well, my I god All right. Listen, like guys we are closing this show today by singing a song <laughs> we're all going to come up with a new song ready it's going to be called are you down with uh uh, PPE, personal <laughs> protective equipment. You're down with PPE, yeah, you know me. <laughs> <laughs> my kids are reworking the lyrics to uh, my Sharona, to my Corona. Yeah, well, ev and everybody's changed. Come on, Eileen, to COVID nineteen. Yeah, <laughs> I keep singing the COVID nineteen. I like that. That's Every, a good one. Before we go to bed, I sing the theme from Annie. The sun will come out tomorrow. And they just look at me and roll their eyes. Tomorrow, oh, Amanda, will tomorrow. You come be my mom? <laughs> we should do this every day, Tess. Let's have a little video chat every day. Check in. I'll sing to you. I like it. Maybe, maybe you know what? I, I, all right. I think we've got to do pivot for, for, for Domain Sherpa. We're going to have the Domain Sherpa quarantine series. And it's just going to be a live Zoom feed that's just <laughs> running all day. Whoever wants to just pop in. You know, we're well, either invitation only. We're gonna, you know, there'll be, uh, it's gonna be restricted. We don't need any like name pros trolls showing up, but <laughs> we, we, you know, we'll send out an invite to all the past Sherpas. And anybody who well, wants to at any idea. point during the day just pops in and, uh, you know, we got a live feed going all the time. That would be that amazing. Would be I love that. Mike Seiger um, did something fabulous yesterday. He just emailed out to whoever wanted. And he was like, yeah, we're all quarantined. We're all bored. Let's get together. Um, it was really nice. Um, there were, I don't know, like 30 people on. It was, it was cool. Um, I didn't make that guest list. Oh, um, <laughs> no, no big deal. Maybe I'll get my invitation soon. Mike, if you're listening, um, Amanda at saw.com. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, Shane, you have scrolled long enough. Amanda, uh, yeah, I get to guess. Um, uh, so I think the only remember, this is enclave.com. Yeah, I think the only downside is some people aren't smart enough to spell enclave correctly. But in general, most people know how to spell it. Um, I think she's right on the money. I would say hmm. He talked about being able to buy three, so that's why I divide the seventy-five into three. So I'll, I'll yeah, I'll say twenty-five grand as well. All right, all right, spot on. Twenty-five, twenty-five is the number. Yeah. Nice so, job. Yeah, I was low. You know, and here's the deal. This is case in point to what I was saying before. Even though I went off on a tangent about stock, I, you know, like this name was I. Uh, um, uh, this was uh, Matthew, um, uh, w w one of the, you know, independent brokers got a newsletter and I saw it out there, you know, maybe a month and a half, month and a half ago, two months ago, you know, 
I don't know if you had a price on it or not. I don't, I don't quite remember, but I, you know, I, I offered, I think uh, 20 grand, right. And he was, whether there was a price in the newsletter or it was making an offer, I had asked about a price and I think they came back at 80,000 was the minimum starting offer. And then it would be more than that. Right. And I, you know, no interest. A couple of weeks went by, they came back, they said they'd do it at 50. I'm like, get out of here, Don't go away. And they came back, it's at 40. And then didn't hear from them for about three weeks. And the guy emailed me a couple of days ago and he just said, you know, seller is now highly motivated. Well, you know, what's your best offer? I said, 25 grand, done, you know, sold. Um, you know, this is the environment we're in. And so, uh, but it's important to keep in, something in mind. If you want one specific name, if there's one name that you want, the chances you're going to get it, you know, for some tremendous discount uh, is very low. But if you've got cash and you're just looking to buy up anything that is way undervalued to come to the market, you're going you're gonna to have a hell of a shopping spree. I mean, there's going to be amazing deals uh, in every market. So that, that was my thought process is, is selling one for 75, which I think is, you know, maybe half what I would have gotten eventually. Um, uh, I mean, I think I got Enclave for, let's say, at an absolute minimum, 10x what it's worth, on 10x under what it's worth. And I, I, personally, I actually think that's probably a 15 to 20 X name. Um, Enclave is, is, is for me. So first of all, I've sold almost every single one of the co-living companies on the planet. I, I've sold them to their main. Um, every, literally every single one. And, and just coincidentally, randomly, we happen to own all of them. Like you're talking uh, uh, Common, um, uh, uh, bungalow.com, common.com, uh, section.com. Uh, uh, there's another one. Um, there's another one. Oh, oh, the, the other one we own, but they, they haven't bought it yet. They're, they're still lowballing, even though they've raised hundreds of millions of dollars now, is stanza, stanza.com, which means um, like room in uh, Italian. And um, stanza.com. You know, so. In my mind, Enclave is like another killer co-living or, or you know, community living or uh, could be co-working, could be anything, but it's a collaborative or, or contained space. That's what an Enclave is. It's a protected space. Uh, and uh, I also was laughing in the back of my head that, you know, if shit really hits the fan, that's going to be the name of my luxury uh, quarantine community that I'm going to build. <laughs> Uh, Sign me up. <laughs> Enclave. It'll be like Gulch Gulch. <laughs> okay. Uh, time for the next uh, part, I think. This was a very long first section, uh, but good. Uh, let's take a moment for our sponsors who support us in our mission to educate people in the domain industry. FD was built by domain investors to increase your inquiries, sales, and profit. Forget spreadsheets and archived emails. Manage your entire investment portfolio in one place using a secure and completely confidential platform. Learn more at FT.com. That's E-F-T-Y. FT.com. So we're going to jump into what is normally the third part. Um, we're looking at the marketplace list sponsored by Namejet.com. Uh, we're reviewing these domains heading to auction soon. And... Do, do, do. Um, Drew, you are up first. Uh, actually, let me read this little blurb first. So um, out of these names, we have a little background. Namejet wanted um, some awareness. So escorts.com is one. It was seized by the U.S. Marshals, and the previous <coughs> owners were fined and jailed because of what they used the name for. Uh, the Marshal Service is now letting it expire. Uh, opportunity or liability. Um, then the other two, just quick comments, mohair.com. For those of you who don't know, mohair is a fabric or yarn made from the hair of the Angora goat. Aren't there like cool mohair jackets? Wasn't that like 70s or something? And then I don't know how to say this, sabar.com, S-A-B-A-R.com. A sabar is a traditional African drum. So, 
Good luck know, competing with Mike Mayan for that name. What's mm -hmm. that? Mike Mann will be on that one like flies on shit. Why? I think the only thing that Mike Mann loves more than himself is drums. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's right. I love, I love Mike. I literally like, I'm one of the few people I think that I, I actually love Mike. I just, I have a very strong proclivity for, you know, eccentric and odd people. And, uh, and Mike is, you know. It's that Bill. Yeah, he's, he's yeah, out what on do there. you have to say about me, Shane? In fact, stop reviewing domains. I'd just like you to review everyone in the domain industry. You just said we're wow. eccentric people. I, hey, yeah, listen, I, I, I'm down. You want, you, want, you want to make that a show? Let's do it. We're going we're gonna to review. We're going to review all the people in the domain industry. That sounds oh like God, a. I would love that it. sounds like a like a like a uh, probably most watched video in the history of the domain industry. <laughs> Hey, do you remember when I, you, you probably don't, but like nine years ago, I wrote a post on my blog that said, I can't name the people, I'm just going to describe them. <laughs> I wrote 50 things and everybody was like, number 16 is me. And other ones like, I know number seven is Elliot. And I know, and it, I just totally made them up. I, I mean, I had some ideas in some cases, but you should have seen the comments and the people saying that's got to be so and so oh like, my god can you please do that again that back yeah, yeah I, so i'll find it bring that back you okay who do we need we're gonna do this and who should so the two of you it sounds like are, are up for this well just write the description you can decide who we're talking about <laughs> um who else should should jump in amanda you i don't feel like you're gonna shit talk anybody <laughs> Yeah, man is not the right probably, person for that that show. Not. I mean, I think at least Drew and I are probably born for that role. She's got a lot to say, just not publicly. There you go. Well. I'm I'm not in I'm not in waiver. Yeah. No, I, I think we're the only ones that uh, don't really care too much <laughs> <laughs> about. Uh, I I as I tell everybody, I got a wife and kid that love me. That's good enough. I'm done. Exactly. That's about all I got room for. That exactly. After that, you can. Where I got is friends. Your daughter is yeah. she school or home? So yeah, I mean that. I was gonna save that one for the last. So we we have a huge problem in that. This she goes to Syracuse, and they decided yesterday that school's done. It's now it's no longer you can't stay at school, um, and they they change everything to pass fail, which is good because the grades were becoming difficult online to take classes and take tests, but. Long story short, they also sent out an email that said the entire school, if you live on campus or in any university owned properties, that you have to have your stuff removed by Sunday. So, <laughs> which everybody's at spring break. They're gone. Ooh. Oh, they're Second, on clothes? Every, they have to take everything out. They said, you, if you can't, if you've left this, the, the campus, you can't come back to get them. You have to send somebody else to get them or the university will pack them for you and make arrangements. Okay. What? Yeah. So you think there's going to be some random Syracuse person packing a dorm room of a 19 year old girl? I don't think so. Second no. of all, they're making, you know, 50,000 students and they don't all live on campus. Let's say 15,000 of them. And you know, their yeah. parents are coming. That's 30,000 people coming in one weekend to get all their stuff together. It's absolutely the most idiotic thing I've ever heard. Yeah. yeah. But imagine they don't, you know, like on the back side of this thing. No, I get the closing, be, but be, they should make be... it over a period of two or three weeks to come get your yeah. stuff. So you don't have everybody yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. coming yeah, at the exact sure. same time. For sure. It's flat sure. removal curve. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, yeah. and we're not having our daughter come home. Um, her boyfriend is from New Rochelle, I think, in New York, which is the hot spot, and they've even- Oh, oh great, that's perfect. Yeah, send us So uh, she's just gonna stay there for a while, and it's safest for both of us. Realistically, she's not gonna get that sick being, you know, 20. Um, yeah. But she certainly could get us sick, so. Yeah. yeah, she's just going to stay and um, we well, all we did is we rented a place. So we rented a, a U-Haul place. She's going to store her stuff in there, move in with a friend that has a house and just stay and continue life and do that. But it's, yeah, you know, again, we'll talk about this at the end, but you, they just don't know what to do. So everybody's trying to make a decision and some work and some don't. So That's true. Yep. yeah, um, yep. I don't even so let's talk about Namejet that. though. Oh, yeah. They're, paying, they're so paying for us to play. So let's play. <laughs> Drew, name Jet, go. 
So, um, you know, escorts.com, very valuable name. I mean, I, you know, uh, what are you going to do with it? <laughs> the, the last guy that gave it a go didn't work out that well for him. Um, but, you know, there is obviously a number where that name just makes a lot of sense. Uh, regardless of how you feel about the industry itself. Um, Sabar, I mean, uh, I used to be a drum player myself. Like I said, I think you're going to be competing against Mike Mann for that one. I, I, I imagine he'll just pay more than you will. Uh, whoever Mike you Mann are. shouldn't be sponsoring this. Mike Mann should be sponsoring this for the money he's going to save. <laughs> Because you're telling well, me. I think there's plenty of people that are going to just bid against him just because. <laughs> um, Mohair, I, I don't know. I, for some reason, I love that name. I don't even know why. It's I probably very too. limited commercial application. I mean, uh, you know, Mohair sweaters, and you know, but it's like cashmere has been on the market forever. Cotton's been on the market forever. Um, you know, cotton.com and cashmere.com, like, you know, wool.com, all those names, they've been on the market forever. They've never sold. I've seen the prices just keep coming down and down. And so mohair, chances are not going to sell for probably ever. But for whatever reason, I do like that name. Um, Ropas is, is close, uh, but it's Ropa. Is, people, Ropa is really plural and singular. Yeah, I was going to say, the, it's plural just without the S. Yeah, like Las Ropas is... You know, kind of like the ropes. I mean, um, so it, it is a word, but it's just not going to be super common. Um, you know, gallstone. A lot of people got gallstones. Uh, there's, there's a there's a market for that. I don't know what it is. I wouldn't want to have a lot into it, but there's a market for it. Uh, Define a lot. What else do I like in here? Yeah, I don't want to be into it for more than a grand. Okay. Um, I really like gourmet store. Not a lot of search, not taking in so many things, but gourmet, I just, we own gourmet.org. I, I just like gourmet. I mean, to me, anything that's luxury, like that's just a market that does well, like better margins in the luxury market. You know, gourmet screams luxury, gourmet store. I, I, I like it. I like it. So, um, I like that name. Uh, you know, that's probably my underdog name. That's probably that's probably my 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 favorite underdog pick. Probably get that for a good deal. Um, all right, I'll leave the rest for these guys. Okay, uh, Shane, is it you? I can, yeah, I can do it. Um, no, I, no, it's Amanda. I gotta go in order. Sorry. Uh, that's fine. <laughs> okay. Um, I think we've all said enough about escorts um i'll be interested to see who buys it see if it sells see if they can do anything with it um, it'll go to national a1 i That's would my agree. prediction yep right here agree. yep i would agree um but but can they do anything with it in their jurisdiction i guess is my um is my question um i'm i'm with you on gourmet store. Um, I think that these two word dot coms, um, we're, we're seeing a great deal of success with those, um, whether they're domain upgrades um, from companies that are on um, not a dot com and maybe have one or two of the other um, keywords in, in their brand. Um, and I also actually like uh, the lingerie dot com. Um, and I actually like footballplayer.com as well. Um, I agree, Mohair, uh, anybody who's ever been a client of mine, um, when they're looking, I always counsel the best one word.com that you can get. Um, I like that. But you I would- that many texts? Is that your- <laughs> Yeah, somebody's text blowing up. I've never heard anybody get more texts than you have. It's a, it's a group. Um, oh. <laughs> it's a group. It's a group. Okay. Just leave I'm it at that. Jealous! I don't have any friends. Uh, I've tried to turn it off several times during this uh, <laughs> during this call. It's not working out for me. Ugh! They won't stop. Anyway, um, I think that this is a a, a decent list. Um, I think there's definitely some deals to be had. Um, I wouldn't spend more than two grand myself on gourmet store or football or even 
the the lingerie, um, although I do think that those are all really good brands um, for startups. Um, I don't love simple gifts. I can't quite figure out why. Um, yeah, those are my picks. Um, yeah. Good. Yeah. And sometimes even knowing you don't like something and it just doesn't feel right, uh, especially with your level of experience, that means a lot. Um, and, uh, you know, good, good for you. Uh, Shane, what do you think? Yeah. I mean, my favorite is definitely mohair. I mean, I have, I grew up with a mohair couch in college. It was fantastic. It was like a green mohair and I didn't know what mohair was before, but the second my parents walked in and go, man, you have a mohair couch. So evidently that was from their generation of the seventies, but it's still fun to say, and the new generation may not know what it is, but they'll understand. And then the other older generation. Mohair laugh. is mo better. Yeah, it's. I feel like it's like sexy and jazzy and it's like. It's the most comfortable couch I ever had before and after. It was, and it changes colors like to a light green when you rub it one way and dark green if you rub it. Exactly. It's that's just, the key. That's the gorgeous. And that you can have the slogan, mohair, mo better. Yeah. And that thing would rob you of everything in your pockets when you sat in it. So <laughs> it was like an ATM for me. So that's because it's gangster. Over. It was just a perfect couch. Uh, speaking of which, one time somebody's pot fell out, like pot store, and it was it left like cannabis. But the, the, talking about pot store, I, I just think pot's done. I don't think any business wants to have the word pot in their business anymore. Oh yeah, yeah, the word pot, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, not, not, a, not in the market. You're like, there's a brand. I'm just, like, no, you don't even yeah, know. Yeah, no, no. Like, Drew, what is Drew holding in his hand as he says that? Yeah, no, no, no not to do with that. Not that. It's just I don't think I think they want a brand with a better phrase, and I don't think that's totally. the word. So I think the value of pot in general is just plummeted when it comes to branding. Again, my opinion, Drew would know much more, but. Um, the only disagreement I have with that one, well, no, I don't even disagree. You're hundred percent right. But um, I've recently, very recently refined my thinking around the word pot only because, so weed, I'm still, I, I just commercially, the weird weed isn't being used, but pot, like it's such, it's a boomer word. Like, like yeah. my dad still says, you know, I'm out of pot, you know, like I'm going to the store to get some more pot, you know, like, like, you know, when, when he, I, I was here, there was this one episode that was traumatizing to me. I, I was probably 16 years old. I was up in the attic with a bunch of my friends smoking dope. And my dad came to the bottom of the stairs and he screamed up. He goes, who's got the pot? Get down here right now. And bring me that goddamn pot. And I, I still, it's ingrained in my head. I remember just freezing like a deer in headlights and like, oh, I'm screwed. Um, and... I think mean, it's pretty your much dad straight. On. We're cannabis. already at the title, The Making of Drew Rosner. Yeah. <laughs> I, I really, really would like to meet your dad. Yeah, I don't you think, and the word flower is coming out more often in use too. Also, yeah, yeah, also. Um, I even sold flwr.com. I mean, this was already about. Yeah, I remember I got it for you. A year you. and a half ago, two years ago. F yeah, flwr.com. How much do you think yeah. I sold that for? I didn't know. I know what you paid for it, but I don't know what you sold but it what for. What I paid like three grand for it. Yeah. Oh, like that. So you, I mean, Shane, what do you mean you got it for him? Define. People. So there was a person that had a Andrew, huge portfolio uh, of four letter dot coms that I was working with during the peak that, I mean, he had, I don't know, five to 10,000 of them. And he happened to have FLWR and I had a pretty good relationship. So I bought it for Drew or got it. I used my relationship to get Drew the name. Nice. Okay, Drew, what'd you sell it for and when? Well, what do you think? Uh, it was about two years ago we sold it. Yeah, and that was probably 2000, I don't, time flies, 2013 to 15. I don't remember when the-, the, the It was around, was around 2000, yeah, it was probably 2014 or 15 that I bought it. 15, yeah. I bet 15. I would and say 25 grand. Last. What's that, Amanda? When was it sold last year? 2019. About two, two, no, about two years ago. I think it was 2018 I sold it. Could have been 2019. I have no perception of time anymore. Yeah, same here. I have to I actually really don't. look when people ask me. I have to go back and look at contracts. I'm going yep. higher, Shane. I think, um, I think 40. I think I sold that name for 75 grand or 80 grand. Nice job. Uh, and I sold it to the same folks I sold um, 
sold them, uh, which I regret. I actually, which I don't regret much, but I, I regret selling this one. I sold them cannabinoid.com and cannabinoids.com uh, and flwr.com. Yeah. Can yeah. I say something, Drew, from our private inventory of what I see when you bought it and how much? Yeah, sure. Um, so you bought it in 2015 for eight grand. Okay. Yeah. Oh. I thought seven, but I, it, it doesn't matter. It, what he yeah. sold it for is still good. Is that? Yeah. Yeah. I disagree. Um, okay. Yeah. How come? I'll no take a 10x anytime. Um, got a 10x for me. Come right over. My doctor.com and that's yeah. my home.com. Shane, go. Yeah. So rank my doctor is a build out. I mean, I think it's fine. I think it'd work. I think everybody remember it, but that's, it's all in the build out, not in the name. I mean, there's a million yeah. rank my things and it can be a great site, but it really is on what gets built behind it uh, as far as that. Um, the other names are fine. You know, in Ropa is the same thing. The first thing I look at is they don't really use the plural as the plural. Not, they don't use S's like us. It, it, Ropa would be, that could be a seven figure name. I mean, that's clothing. That doesn't get much bigger than that. But, um, you know, again, the football player to me, I get it. it it's generic. So you could use, use it. So NFL and all the different terms, you got to go generic, but it is super generic, almost too generic for me. Uh, and lingerie is way down there. You know, Victoria's Secret can tell you right now they wish they weren't in the lingerie business. Uh, it's I'm sure it'll come back. And I look at it and I still think lingerie anyway. That shows how redneck I yeah. am. Yeah. So I, I, I do think it's OK, but I do think it's it's definitely at a bottom. So I guess that's when you're supposed to buy things when they're low. So well, I, only I, if I, you I, think that they're not going to stay there. Yeah, I mean, I know today's, I, I think today, I don't know, I'm old, so I don't really see what young women are wearing anymore. I don't go to escorts.com, so I'm not real sure. Um, I have a 20-year-old daughter, so I'm not even allowed to think about what it could be. Um, so, uh, but Gallstone's another one. I think Gallstone's just a great brand. It doesn't have to be medical. It could be anything. What are you talking? Who wants a Gallstone? What are you going to sell? Are you going to sell, like, what are you going to be a financial platform? Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah. Nobody even knows what the gallstone. I mean, what it the doesn't do anything. I don't think. Off. Except. Yeah, I mean, a gallstone's a bad thing, right? You get a gallstone, have a bad move. You get a bad, yeah, and it and it's uh, becoming more mainstream now that people are aware of gallstones and that you got to avoid yeah, them. Too much information, but I have a family member who had um had it removed recently, and it's like your appendix. You don't need it. I mean, it's no, no, no. Hold on, you guys are confusing gallbladder with gallstone. Your gallbladder. Right. It, well, so exactly. You don't need the gallbladder, so you sure as heck don't need the stones that go with it. But yeah, yeah. It's, so it's something useless in, it's a bad, painful thing in a useless body part. You got it. Um, Except that I think they're actually starting to discover that there might, have, there might be a purpose for the gallbladder. That they're like, oh, all well, you guys that removed it, actually, it might have a benefit. Getting coronavirus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, but I don't know what you... it is a big medical problem. So I think it's three against one. I'm weighing in on this. Shane, yeah. it is not I think this is the most wrong for... Shane's ever been on this show. Yeah. I'm calling it. Most wrong Shane's ever been on the show. Oh, I didn't say, I can like it and not think it's, I would pay more than $500. <laughs> you said it's a great brand. Oh, it's not a great brand. I was talking about... <laughs> As I thought about it, I go, what the hell would I brand it for? I meant to say it's memorable. How is about this that? the best show ever? <laughs> yeah. No, it's not a great help, help through delivery. Gallstone.com. Yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> I'm all for memorable. Like, I think things that are, um, that are maybe controversial or maybe don't fit the thing are good. But I was just, as you guys were talking, I'm going, what, what would I call? I mean, would I call it a book? I mean, I can't think of anything that would be, yeah. I take back everything I said after listening. <laughs> I can, I can I apologize. I get things wrong. I talk it out. Yeah, absolutely. That's the important yeah. thing. You just keep I talking think it out and think that was just keep talking it out. Kidney stone. Like after gallstone, kidney stone. Like yeah, I don't, gonna make a kidney great sounds more painful than gall. I don't know though. I don't know, but I instantly, they're both stones. They're both from like weird random body parts. I, I would name my band I gallstone. I know that. Like a heavy metal That's band. That's true. That's absolutely. true. I, I, that, that works. Okay. That works. I do That's not the only thing I can that. say is he found it out. He found it out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well done. All right. Um, what are we doing here? We're done with name chat. Thank you. Name chat. Yeah. That was an awesome list. Great conversation. 
Uh, number three, let's talk about coronavirus and how it's affecting you and anything that you think might be useful for um, our Sherpa network to hear. And dun, 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 I don't remember who goes first. I should be more together. Um, Shane. Number two. Shane, go. I'll go. All right. Um, I'm not going to give advice because that's not me to give. But I will tell you, as from a business standpoint, owning a business, a retail business in the United States where customers come in and out uh, is brutal. And I, I'm in, I honestly feel that I'm the probably the best business in the United States other than like Amazon um, when it comes to safety. We work outside. We work in pairs, ones or twos. Like when I go to your house and lay down mulch, I don't touch you, see you, feel you. It's the same two guys. The only danger are the two <laughs> people in the truck. Are you going to put that on your billboard, on your bumper? Yeah. Store? No I don't touching. touch you, feel you. <laughs> no, I'm nowhere near our customers when it comes to those types of services. So from that standpoint, it's uninterrupted. Um, from as far as the legality, it's really tough on like today. So I've had to give a, a 15 minute speech to our, our employees every single day. Luckily I've been ahead of it and the communication I feel has been much, I've had more meetings this week than I have for 10 years just cause I, I have to let them know what's going on. But um, a couple of things that, you know, we were ahead of the days off. Like the biggest problem for me is I don't want anybody coming to work sick. I don't people, most of this country lives paycheck to paycheck and they can't afford to miss a day. If I print my checks an hour late at work on Friday, I have four or five people that get uh, nervous. I mean, that's how it is. It, it's not that I'm paying less. If I paid them four times as much, they would still probably live paycheck to paycheck. It's just unfortunately where a lot of people are. So I had to assure them way before, you know, we did this two weeks ago, you get two weeks pay. Even the day guy that started and woman that started yesterday, I still got you for two weeks. So I got ahead of that part. But then came the next one last night of someone saying that somebody else in the nursery, their husband may have been in contact with Corona and I don't feel comfortable working with them. So this is the, the old witch hunt where maybe that person might be infected. Mm -hmm. I'm nervous working with them at work. You know, how do you handle that situation? That's and it really turns out there are some legal things. That's really meaningful right. that somebody could come to you and tell you that and trust you with that anxiety because walking around worrying about that can cause some issues. But I think that's in every company that that's their biggest yeah. fear is working with somebody that's sick. So that's why you're saying, let's just close it down and nobody comes to work. It's not that simple. Uh, in many businesses, there are there, you know, my business has been around since 1865. And if I didn't go this year, let's say we close the whole year, I would probably have to, to sell assets. To, to come again. And this is, a, I'm a strong financial place. Anybody else would be toast. And so, uh, but let's, let's get past that. Let's, let's say that, um, that you have, you know, a, a restaurant that's, you know, I don't know how you come back from that. I'm outside. I have perishable goods. I have plants that if I don't water them, they're, they're not going to come back. I have plants it let's say everything's clear in six weeks if i don't plant them now i don't have a product to sell in six weeks so i have this unusual thing where i at least have to keep bare bone staff in there to keep things watered but we're trying to do separation as far as people uh, know you know my in my rules at my work now no more than two people can work together and it has to be the same people two people the entire time mm -hmm. no two people can't come in the office if you come in in the kitchen it's two people at a time, wipe down next person. No people at lunch other than two at a time, six feet apart at the table. Everything's washed down. All the microwaves, nobody punches the time clock. No more touching the time clock. Um, you are not allowed to say the name of somebody that you uh, think is infected. You cannot liable somebody else. All people need to be used unnamed. You just have to express your fears and then I have to deal with everybody individually. If they name them and I send them home on quarantine and they leave and they don't need to be, they can sue me and the person that named them for losing their time because wow. it was unproven and unwarranted. 
Two questions. Mm. You said you've had more meetings than ever, but I suspect you weren't all like in a group huddle. So can you say how you've done that? Yeah, so every we do the same thing. We, we come together in the morning and we come in the room and it's exactly like you think, six feet. So we clean the room before, it, it is like a movie. It is Lysol lavender. I, had to, I switched to lavender because the Lysol spray was so thick. You could barely breathe coming in the room. So yeah, you Lysol don't even lavender, want to breathe that shit hand a hand wash cleaning of everything you come in six feet apart and i have to and it's not to be racist but the, we have a lot of hispanics they are social they are not grasping the seriousness of it um in general it's a i can tell by looking on how they're interacting how they're sitting how they're talking so i i they do speak english but i also had somebody come in in spanish and say this is serious after work this has to apply at work this has to apply and i will simply have if, if we see that you're not adhering to this whether it's personal or here then you have to go home for the safety of everybody else we can only get through it and, and i'm not saying this this is what i said but i truly mean it the only way a company gets through it is if every single person you're as weak as the weakest person in that nursery and how they react and so yep. we have and, and we're about 25 and so but they're all individual greenhouses. They're all in separate, they're, they're isolated in their job into one location and they would be for a month. So, you know, I, I think that's as safe as I can get it. And if it's not safe than that, then it's only people watering the plants. How did that's you what's gonna happen. the times? So you had a real um, punch clock. And yeah, we have an iPad where you punch in and punch out. So what are you doing? So we wiped it down, but I told everybody I don't want them coming in the nursery for lunches. And, and so what I said is, you don't have to punch in and out from lunches. I want you to come in the morning and punch in and we wipe down. Um, but yeah. lunch is no more. You know, just little, all these little things add up. Yeah. You know, you reduce as much as you can. And um, same with customers. Only one customer allowed in the nursery at a time. We're not that busy. One customer at a time, wipe down all the cards and tables after every single customer. And we only have about 10 a day, but it's... You know, that's what we do to stay open until we can't stay open. Daily. And you know, those are the kind of things we've done. Now, my wife, she runs a thousand people warehouse. She's got all kinds, of, and she had the same thing as me. You know, she had somebody that said, uh, Joni, I'm making up names, Joni's husband works with a guy who um, was infected. You don't know if it's true or not. But the rumor starts spreading around the warehouse and it is a plague. It's as bad as, yeah. you know, it's, it's a plague and it puts fear and uncertainty in it. And my wife has to deal with that. And she paid, just had to say to everybody, if somebody tests positive, their partner is, you know, stays home. But you can't go two, three, four, five degrees of separation on quarantine or would just all go home. Those are the kind of things. But it's really tough. It's so, every night it's different. You know, I had to post wash hands. Like I didn't think you would have to post a sign that says wash your hands every time you're in the bathroom here, but legally they want me to do that too. So, um, just now I thought that was always a thing. Or no, that that's if you're in a cooking environment. I oh. mean, yeah, if you, if you do food that you have to by law, if you're in just a regular public restroom, you, don't normally have to post that kind of stuff. But yeah, there's just, it's, you know, last night at nine o'clock, I'm talking to, a, 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 we're on a group chat with lawyers on how to handle. There are no rules. There's nothing set out on what you want to do. There's some common sense, but this goes way above common sense. This is, um, you know, this is a, a real life and it, it's really affecting people. It's so easy to say quarantine, go home, stay home. It's not that simple. It, it, this, this will change lives way beyond a sickness. Um, I know people will die, but uh, not only will you have people die, but you will have people's lives changed forever if they can't go back to work. So there's just this balancing act of how to handle this. And that's what I do every day. I mean, it's, um, I, I've never had anxiety. I'm kind of, it's just not anything to bother me because I live a really pretty simple life. But I got a lot to think about and you know what you know what would happen if this does it's not just about me I don't work in tech and I can go home and work from home and laugh about what I'm gonna watch on Netflix next it's not that's not how I it's not that easy you know it's you can chastise me for not just staying home but 
I wish it were that simple, but my plants and uh, people, I have to do special things and, and be safe. And it's really, really tough. One more question as a small business owner, um, what are you doing to inform, like, are you doing any marketing uh, proactively to tell people that if they come in, you've all been really clean and aware and you clean before and after? Perfect. That's a perfect question. Because before I came in over here, I sent out a newsletter. Like I hate these new newsletters that say, I sold you shoes in 2018 and I want to show yeah, you yeah, yeah. about COVID. You know, yeah. those are completely worthless. What I do want is the newsletter that I sent out today saying, we are open. I would prefer that you would call and order a tree or mulch or whatever you need brought to your house on the phone or email. If you would like to come out, you can come out to the nursery and we will keep the conversation outside. Do not come in the office. We'll come out to you and we'll, we'll talk to you outside and walk around and keep our distance. Um, if you want to buy from the car, I'll load your bags of mulch or your plants in the back of your trunk and you don't have to get out and we'll just swipe and kind of wipe up the best we can. I want to keep it to a minimum. Um, mulch yeah. is easy. People are just ordering mulch. I'm swiping it at the car. I don't have to do anything. The most dirty thing I have to do is touch their credit card. Um, and then do they have to sign? They just sign. Just like a little, you know, you take an iPhone, they sign with their finger. And they, they're doing that with their real finger? Yeah, the real finger. You wipe it down with a, a wipe and that's it. You know, I don't even like to get close to them in the car and talk to them. But it's really a truck. I just load. Like, you know, yesterday I loaded, I loaded 90 yards of mulch. Um, we've been out landscaping. We haven't talked to the customer, but we've been landscaping for four weeks. Our actual sales are up 40% in the month of March. Wow, everybody's got to look at their yards now, I guess. Well, you got nothing left. Gardening is not canceled. No. I just think that's a great um, approach that you're taking. And um, it's, I think people would really appreciate that. And it might bring in some business that otherwise people didn't think of. So good for you. Well, I mean, I know we're not a necessity. I don't pretend that we are, but I do think we can be a safe option other than just in general, you don't want to talk to people. But if you are going to, and I'll tell a real quick story. So my dad has had a heart attack and he, he just had to have some things done here locally that he had to fly in, which it couldn't have been a worse time, but he did fly in. And I, we took him to the, the doctor, you know, and the doctor wouldn't, if it wasn't something he didn't need, they wouldn't have had him come. Um, so he did anyway. And I drove him to the airport last night. There was him and his wife and two people on the plane. So four people on the plane. It's a small airport in Springfield by Adam. Two people working, one in gate, one in security, and one at Subway, which closes now. Restaurant, our restaurants are all closed except for drive through and take out starting tomorrow. So that was their last day open. Those were the three people in the whole entire airport. Then I went to Chipotle thinking it's gonna be empty. I can sneak in there and not see anybody. I walk in the front door and there's 50 people in that restaurant, all from what? 18 to 25, laughing away, eating away, ordering away. Nah, I'm gonna pass. It was safer at the airport than it was at Chipotle last night. That's why they're closing the restaurants. That's why they should close the restaurants because people are being stupid asses. Yeah, and doing things so like that. stupid. It's just yeah. stupid. That's why, you know, they're saying, well, I think this is too much. No, Illinois closed all restaurants and bars and everything for one like reason. St. <laughs> Patrick's at Wrigley Field, there were 50,000 people partying. Close yeah. the fucker down. If you guys can't do it, we'll do it for you. Yeah, yeah. I just don't get it. It's like, how yeah. can you be so stupid? Like, yeah, Absolutely. China built two 1500 bed hospitals in 10 days. Italy unplugged its entire economy. Spain unplugged its entire economy. Portugal's about to unplug its Well, basically, we already have. Uh, you know, you've got, I think you've got something like 14 co co uh, countries around the world that have literally just Unplug. Then let me say, all right, bump, unplug. Shut down the the entire national economy. Done. Overnight. Done. Unprecedented. This has never happened in human history. And then you still have absolute morons. And if you are one of those people watching this show, I implore you, like, 
please get your shit together. But you it's idiot. generally not. It's the eight, you know, the people that aren't getting sick, even though they've proven to be 30% of the carriers. I mean, the people like South Korea tested it's also everybody. The people who are highest risk, who aren't paying attention. It's, it's you know, I yeah. look at my wife's father. I look at uh, yeah. my parents. It took, my mom was on board quickly. My dad, you know, he's still only 50% there. And he's got, he's, you know, he gets it, he's dead. I, I, like, I don't say that lightly. I mean, he has 40% of his lung capacity from a, you know, blood clot. It collapsed his lung, you know, about 15 years ago. He's got 40% lung capacity. You know, he loses his breath when he bends over to tie his shoes. Like, he gets it, he's dead. Yeah. And yet he's like, you know, but now he's, he's, he's there. But it's like, folks, this stuff doesn't happen unless it is something absolutely catastrophic. They don't unplug global economies. They don't build hospitals in 10 days. They don't take the measures that are being taken. They, the Fed doesn't come out and start literally bazooka like, you know, one trillion there, four trillion there, 500 billion there. They're just blasting hundreds of billions of dollars, trillions of dollars all over the world. When it's all said and done, central banks and the Fed are going to spend 10 to 15 trillion dollars in stimulus, varying forms of stimulus, from helicopter money to interest rate cuts to buying commercial paper to buying their own freaking paper. To, you, you name it. You name but, it. But the problem I, is, you is if you don't have a paycheck, this flu. doesn't come through it's very like, well. Ah, this but isn't I, happening because of the flu. But I also Get think your shit that together. The, the crisis communication and the way that it was not delivered is a huge problem in the United States. When you have someone telling you that this is just like the flu or the common cold and hey, use common sense, wash your hands, and you have that rhetoric repeated to you every single night on the evening news for two weeks, that's what people hang on to because they you, don't. You, yeah. But yeah. I think honestly, I, I mean, for those of you that aren't watching the nightly news in the United States, that is what we were fed for a number of weeks leading up to this. And again, I'm grateful that I have people that live in other countries who were experiencing this well before we were and said to me, hey, I know you think I'm a chicken little and the sky is falling, but here's what's really happening here. And it's only a matter of time before it gets to you. Um, my parents were very similar to yours, Drew, up until this weekend, my parents were at a dinner party and you know they were like, we're fine. No, you're not fine. You have no idea where those other 25 couples that you're with right now have been in yeah. the past two weeks. So yeah. I think or their kids. Right. Yeah, it's really, yeah, it's not about you. Unfortunate <laughs> that we were not communicated with properly and that the doctors were not doing the ones. We're but not here's what ones. I learned about the United States is, they don't listen anyway like it unless we shut it down that's yeah. why we had to shut it yeah. down we yeah. didn't have to yeah. shut it down if people would have listened honestly but, it, well, but all states haven't done this i think that's the other problem is that we don't have um i, I don't know i don't know if somebody's gonna show so you can still go in i say it won't be eventually i mean i can't imagine that they'll allow people to right. just congregate in restaurants. No, I know, but like your Illinois did it over the weekend. Massachusetts did it over the weekend. I think there are still some states that even border where I am right now that are not as locked down as others. And I think that that's because each state has its own form of government and we don't have anybody unfortunately i think nationally running the show and saying everyone must adhere to these same yeah. policies i think well, we have a boomer running it and he's acting like the rest of the boomers i think this is the biggest problem that i see i keep hearing people say it's only the old people who are gonna die and i'm strong and i can get through this and i read a statistic and drew i've been meaning to ask you um, I read that the problem is 50% of the people, all people, any age who get this require two to three weeks of hospitalization. And so I think people get like, okay, grocery stores are going to close. 
but what do I care? I'll just be home and I'll be fine because I have a mountain of toilet paper. Um, but if I get sick, just because I think the more problematic statistic, I don't think I'm going to be in the 3% who die. Um, uh, <laughs> quick knock on wood. Um, but if I need to be hospitalized for two, I didn't, like if 50% of people need hospitalization to get through this, that is a very different problem. And I think that's like where the yeah. connect is. What do you yeah. think that statistic drew? Of 50, hospitalization? Is that what you've heard? No, it's not going to be that. No, 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 no. So about roughly 20% of people present with some complications about somewhere, it's been very different in different countries, but some, somewhere between seven and 15% uh, of people will end up in the hospital. Um, uh, it's pretty consistently eight to 10% that, that end up in an ICU. Okay. And, um, uh, you know, of the people in the ICU, I think it's around 30% that end up dying, um, which is roughly 3% of, of, you know, total population. There was a study that came out today, though, uh, questioning some of the data out of China that had set that 3% fatality rate. And uh, they're showing it closer to like 1.3%, mm -hmm. which, you know, again, it's like, that's still 100 times higher than the flu. So, 10. you know, or 10 so times. Flu is 0 0.1. 0 0.1. Yeah, you're right. So, sorry, 10, 10 times higher than the flu. So, that's still a very big number. Here's the problem I have with all these numbers um, and why I think people are focused on them too much. They're good for understanding trajectories and patterns and, you know, they're good for the doctors to, uh, and the scientists to, to use, but not necessarily so much for, the, for people. But, but what is important is what you were just saying is that, uh, if 70% of the population is going to be infected at 700 call it six, 700 million people in the United States, 10% uh, of those people need to go to the hospital. Um, if 10% of those people end up in an ICU, um, that's 60 million people. And uh, even if that's spread over three or four months, six months, that we, that's just way more than the capacity of any country in the world. And so, um, all these numbers are going to change because when we get to that point, if we get to that point, which uh, you know, I hope we don't, but I, I, I think that everybody took action too late. Um, you know, people were criticizing China saying they were too, too slow, but China acted way before, uh, you know, relatively speaking, China acted much faster than the U.S. has acted. So, you know, China was able to contain that at 80,000, 100,000, whatever, I don't know what their number is today. You know, but I think it peaked around 80, um, you know, when they were still adding that exponential growth. I, you know, I'm sure they're probably at 100,000 cases total now. Um, but of active cases, it's probably 10,000, 10, 20,000 max, you know, throughout the whole country. And that's declining. Um, the U.S. is just getting started into a parabolic curve. And so, um, you know, I'm seeing that here. I mean, my, our hospitals in, in Portugal... Uh, as of yesterday, are basically at capacity, and uh, we're, you know, we're a week or ten days ahead of you guys, maybe two weeks. Yeah, um, <clears throat> the U.S. is way better prepared. Uh, yeah, we have more just tables in general. Yeah. Um, but the point is just that um, all of these numbers go out the window once uh, the healthcare systems become overwhelmed. So, uh, I, you know, in my how how this is affecting me, the only thing I want to say is. You know, I think I've said my part in terms of what is, what's happening in the domain market and, and the way to think about things. Um, uh, you know, my sister uh, works in an ICU. She's on the front line of this thing. You know, I had like an hour call with her. She's scared as hell. She's so scared. Her first shift this week will be Friday. And uh, she's got three patients in her ICU that are, you know, clinically uh, or tested, diagnosed with, with COVID-19 and uh, she's severely asthmatic, you know, and it's like, I, I, I can't help but feel like, you know, having that call with her, that was a hard call. And, uh, you know, I, I have the feeling it's like sending a soldier off to battle. 
you know, and, and I think that that's what it is. I think that our healthcare workers are the front line. I think that they are soldiers. Uh, this is a war. We are on war footing. And if you don't feel it yet, you will in a week or two. Uh, because I can tell you here, this is, it's war footing. We're, we're at war. Uh, the whole world, I don't care who, who you are, I don't care how rich you are, how poor you are, how powerful you are, the entire world is, in fact, is, is affected by this. And uh, I think that uh, anybody who knows a healthcare worker who will be on the front line of this, I think that the absolute single most important thing that any of us can do is to support them. In the same way that America, uh, most countries have had an amazing history of supporting our, our troops, uh, and we should continue to do that because we've got troops in a lot of hazardous places around the world, aside from COVID-19. Uh, uh, you know, our healthcare workers are the new military force, uh, and they are on the ground in your backyard. And anything you can do, whether that's just cook dinner and bring it over to them, babysit their kids, you know, uh, whatever. You know, uh, whatever you can do to help, even if it's just emotional support. Um, you know, you got an extra room above the garage. Well, you know, a lot of these people, they can't come home to their families because of the risk of infecting their families. And a lot of these people, uh, they need a place to stay. Um, I think Airbnb is doing some, maybe doing something to help uh, nurses and doctors. I think I've read something about that. Uh, but I think... Uh, that's the only thing I want to say is that, you know, uh, we are taking a lot of young people who are inexperienced with any type of situation like this, as if any of us are experienced with it. And these people are going to be on the front line the same way that we've got 18 to 25 year old soldiers that don't know their elbow from their asshole. And we put them on the front line of wars, mostly which are probably unnecessary. Um, and uh, you know, these people need our support. Uh, so anything that anybody can do to support those people, I think. Uh, well, one of the, the biggest things you can do to support them is stay inside. <laughs> so they don't have to work <laughs> on you. This is why I get so mad. It's like, well said. Just don't be an asshole. Just stay inside. There's a great yeah. meme. And it's like, you know, your grandparents were asked to go to war. You're being asked to stay home and sit on your goddamn yeah. sofa. So shut the fuck up, get inside, and don't leave. Just like I know, but that's that, and, and Amazon and fucking Whole Foods. Just order some goddamn food, put it on your credit card. The government's probably gonna forgive all your debt anyways. So <laughs> just stay home. But here, but that's home. that's where I started, Drew. Sometimes it's not, you know, like in central flyover states, it's just not that easy. They don't have the kind of job you can maintain your income and do no. that. And you have yes. money in but the bank. If you can, if you yeah. can. So my job is to take the next step and say, we got to keep moving forward. How can I provide the safest environment yes. for you? We're going to yes. have trouble, but to not lose everything. And so that's, yep. that's what I'm juggling. And I think, it, it'd I be think easier to stay sharing home. Sharing that protocol, sharing that protocol with other people. You know, yeah. it's like, look, this is a first for everybody, right? Yeah. We, we're all just trying to freaking figure it out. Yeah. So anybody who's, you know, being proactive and, and, and not that anybody's got the right. And I think everybody should stay proactive. home. But if right. somebody's advice to me is to tell everybody to go home. OK, well, you're going to have to be smarter than that. Let's say we can't yeah. go home. Now, what do we do? <laughs> you know? Yeah. But, the, but we do. The, the key to everything is and it starts and ends with this. Limit the risk. Well, yeah. That's it. And Whatever you can yeah. do to limit it the most. If it's stay home, stay home. If yeah. you have to yeah. go here. Do this. If you have to do this, and the word is have. If you don't have, have don't. to. Exactly. If you don't, you have to realize what have to. You don't have to go to Chipotle and order a fucking burrito. You can stay home. That it's I get. Need but, versus yep. versus yeah. want at this yeah. point, and I think um, Americans in general feel very much that it is their right to do what they want to do and don't yeah. realize that um, it's become an incredibly selfish way for us to be living and this is like the reality check of it correcting yeah. um, we, we don't know how to survive 
No, we, we had our I, landscapers um, scheduled for yesterday and I texted her and, you know, I said, completely understand if you don't want to come, like if you don't want your crew um, here, but at the, in the back of my mind, I was thinking it's outdoors. It's like they, if, if they're not they, coming inside, you won't see them. Great. Exactly. She just texted me, do, where do you want this? Do you want me to take the pallets? Like, what do you want? And I was thinking about it. And my husband said to me, Amanda, do we really need that right now? And, and I thought, no, we don't really need it. But if they're willing to come, yeah. they need it. like they need. And it. I'm not saying it because I'm a landscaper, but if, no, if but you can was, afford to do that, you're helping them by right, allowing them. Thing that that's one of the things that you brought up. Like we're not having our cleaning people um, come because A, she doesn't want to and B, I don't really want her here. So yeah, what, yeah. what we said, you know, is we'll make it up to you for sure. But um, if you don't want to be here, we don't really want you to be here either. Um, if she had said she was going to come, I was going to try and figure it out with her as far as like, okay, we're leaving. Yeah. And um, I want yeah. you to have gloves and, you know, have yeah, you don't want to break the seal, as they say. There's no, if you've yeah. got a good seal, you don't want to break the seal. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I want to wrap this up. I think this was super useful. Um, we went from like the funniest show ever. And then I watched my face while at towards the end here and I'm like ready to cry. Um, but this is, you know, there's a difference between fear and precautions. Um, mm -hmm. This is not, you know, the sky is falling, but I think it's nice to hear three, four very different um, perspectives from different parts of the world and um, some really great ideas of what we can do um, to impact some change. Um, I really appreciated the last time Drew was on talking about um, how he's used this quiet time as a business opportunity. Um, I haven't really had any quiet time, to be honest with you. I, I, I've had less quality time than I've ever had in my life. But. <laughs> Zip it. <laughs> um, but really, it's a time for focus. Find the opportunity in your families. I saw a tweet where this guy was like, so I talked to my wife last night, found out she works in the whatever field. <laughs> like, nice um, you know, there are opportunities here, and despite the fear and the vulnerability that we all feel, there's the camaraderie, the um, uh, correction of that need versus want values. Um, there's a lot of inner opportunity and community opportunity. So um, I love our Sherpa community, and I think that... Um, this was a wonderful show. And Drew, I think we're all too sad to, to sing now. We should have done this before. This just okay. All right. Well, well everybody come up with a verse for the next show. Yeah. Okay. It's on. All right. Time to say goodbye. <laughs> Seems like the perfect way to end. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you each for being here and sharing all your thoughts. Stay healthy. See you all next time. Oh. And. And. My last bit of advice, okay? Uh, and I feel fairly qualified for my age group to make this advice. Uh, I've been married 15 years and I've been in quarantine already for three weeks, which is probably more than any of you. Uh, it ain't easy. And if you're in a, an early or a young marriage, it ain't gonna be easy. And you're gonna learn a lot about each other that you don't know. Uh, and you're going to fight and it's going to be ugly and there's nowhere to go. Everything that happens in quarantine stays in quarantine. <laughs> Keep it that way. That's some great advice. Words to stay married by. Yeah. The, uh, keep the fights clean and the sex dirty. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Great part. <laughs> and on that note. Yeah. Careful wisdom. <laughs> Bye guys. Cheers.